Loquats are the best fruit you've never tasted, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to grow them in this video. Loquats are a tree from China that have a ton of Chinese mythology. In fact, they used to be apparently lining the banks of rivers where these delicious fruit would fall into the river, carp would eat the fruit, and the carp would gain the strength to swim upstream and become dragons. So in ancient history, it was the fruit of Chinese royalty, but of course today, I am not Chinese royalty and I have a beautiful loquat tree. So why not grow this plant? I think it's highly underrated to grow a sort of semi-tropical that is somewhat adapted to cool climates where both the fruit and the leaves are edible. Loquats were introduced to Europe in the 1600s, made their way to America in the 1870s, and they grow as an evergreen tree. Mine's pretty tall, they can get up to 30 feet tall, but if you're growing them in production or in a home backyard, kind of want to keep them at that 10 to 15 foot range like I have here. If they're grown that way, you sort of treat them as like a dense, bushy shrub. But if you're in a climate where you can't grow it in the ground, they actually make fantastic container plants. You might think for a tree like this, there's only a few varieties, but in fact, around the world, there are 800 plus different types of loquat cultivars. Just in California alone, we grow about 100 different varieties. I don't even know the variety that I have because it was here when I bought the property, just like my old house. So loquats sort of have this special meaning to me as a gardener. They were at both of the properties where I really developed my green thumb. Now, what you need to know is when you put a loquat in the ground, it's gonna be two to three years before you start to get some fruit. And that fruit can be peach colored, can be white colored flesh on large trees like the one behind me. You'll get about 100 pounds of fruit per season in these tiny little plump, sort of plumish looking shaped fruits that can be a little bit unwieldy to deal with, but I'll show you how to do that later in the video. The real key with loquat is understanding the flower and fruiting cycle. This is a plant that if you were to prune it in fall, much like you would a deciduous tree like let's say your apples, you would be in a really bad situation. And that's because the flowers form after a warm summer in the fall and all the fruit comes off of that new growth. So the new growth that's less than six months old will throw out a cluster of flowers, these panicles that then get pollinated roughly in November, December, October, somewhere in that range that then form fruit right about now-ish in the Feb to March to April range. Let's talk varieties. Here are the ones to go try to find at a nursery. These are the ones commonly grown in the USA. So Vista White, sort of white to peachish color, small to medium fruit. The only thing about this one is you do need a second tree to cross pollinate. The one that I suspect this one might be is Gold Nugget, which is a large fruit, orange flesh, orange skin, nice and sweet, sometimes tart depending on how the season goes, but it's self fertile. Next up, Early Red. I haven't seen this one personally. This one is an orange flesh, orange reddish skin that has these little white dots on it. Again, it's a self fertile variety. Next up is Champagne with a white to yellowish sort of flesh and then a pale yellow orangish skin. It's a medium size and it's also self fertile. Now, if you're in a cold climate and want to grow it in a container, there's a variety called Strawberry, which is really interesting. It'll top out at about eight to 10 feet tall and it has this sort of tart alpine strawberry type of flavor. So there's still a great recommendation for those of you in containers. So grabbing your loquat tree is pretty easy. Go to the nursery, grab your favorite variety, but a couple creative ways that we've made more loquats, you can actually take cuttings and they root pretty easily, but growing from seed is actually viable. So take a look at this big loquat. What I like to do is I kind of rub the fuzz away. There's a little bit of fuzz if you're eating it fresh in the field. And then I'll take a bite. Tart, but still really good. Actually getting almost right to that ripeness point. Usually loquat will have at least two or three seeds. I've seen some monsters that have like five or six. Just rinse off the sort of loquat residue. You do not want to dry the seed out and then plop it in some soil. And in fact, that's what we did last year. So I've got the son of Epic Loquat right here. And if you're watching this video, at the end of this video, I'm actually gonna give this away to one of you watching just as a way to say thanks for connecting with our content. But honestly, growing from seed, it's a little bit intense. Most of these commercially grown Loquats are grafted onto a rootstock, which gives them a little more vigorous growth. It's a fun experiment though. And honestly, there are so many seeds on this tree right now that you might as well have some fun with it. If you're growing loquat in a container, simple rules of thumb, all you need to do is grab a pot that's at least 20 to 24 inches across. So this is even just a tiny bit small. I'd probably go to one about this big or so. Fertile, loamy soil, good potting mix would work. Something like maybe Happy Frog or Ocean Forest from Fox Farm. 
pop it in and you can throw some fertilizer in the hole the same time that you plant. And there you go, you got a container low quad. It isn't that picky as far as soil conditions. Now, if you're growing it in ground, what you can do is dig a four foot wide hole, pop it in, throw some fertilizer in, and off you go. Now, what you'll notice here on this one is I have two trees in the same hole. So whoever planted this decided they wanted two different varieties because these are actually different fruits on this side and this side of the tree. But when it comes to fertilizing, a good rule of thumb is about a pound for every inch of trunk diameter. So what I would do here is I would actually move my mulch away. I have quite a bit of mulch here, at least, I don't know, four, five, six inches. And then I would come in and give this a sprinkle and I'd actually fertilize out to about four feet or so around the entire ring of the tree, cover my mulch back up, and then I'd come in and give it a healthy water. And that's really all you need to do for fertilizing. For light and watering conditions for loquats, they want full sun, they want a healthy amount of water. So in my case, in my yard, east is roughly there, west is roughly there. So throughout the whole day, they're actually getting exposed mostly on this side until later in the day. So I have a sort of part-ish shade, mostly because the loquat's just huge at this point, because they will, in the heat of the summer, want a little bit of afternoon shade if you can give it to them. The thing you're gonna run into as far as problems go is if temps get above 95 Fahrenheit, what'll happen is these delicious leaves here, and yes, they are edible, will start to scorch and burn. So the only real way you can combat that if you don't have shade is to give it a healthy amount of water. So you can get leaf tip burn, like I mentioned. It's really not that big a deal. I personally don't stress about it much. There are some other problems you can run into. Fire blight is one. It's a member of the rose family. It's sort of susceptible to similar things that, that roses are. And then you've got your sort of standard garden varieties of pests, aphids, white flies, et cetera. But to be honest with you guys, I don't do a lot of pest control on this. I don't spray the tree at all. Why? I mean, look at it. There's hundreds, maybe even thousands of fruit. If some bugs are getting some of them, welcome. Welcome to the garden. Enjoy the all-you-can-eat buffet. I'll have the rest of the loquats for myself. The only real care thing that you need to make sure you do are two different types of pruning. And to show you the first one, let's go under the tree. So we're underneath the tree and you need to do a little bit of a look-see and see what's going on. For example, what I notice is I've got all these young offshoots here. Now, what's really gonna happen with these? They're in the middle of the tree, they're in full shade, and they're honestly at a very awkward low angle. You wanna remove all of these. You can do this at any time of the year. April, May is a good time to do it. And honestly, it's a little satisfying. You're just preventing the tree from throwing out what would have been a ton of wasted energy. Now, that's obvious. Then you've got stuff like this up here. If you take a look at this branch and you'll get a better sense for it when I actually cut it off, there's nothing going on here anymore. So what I wanna do is come in with my pruning saw and remove it because all it's doing is blocking light from this tree. Now, look at this. Most of this is completely wasted. Yes, there were a few leaves. Yes, there were sort of very poorly misshapen clusters of fruit here, but it was buried in there and all it was doing was blocking airflow and blocking light flow. And so you can come in as the fruit's starting to set and do a bit of a prune up, tune up, and then honestly just chop that up, leave it on the ground for mulch. After you fruit though, is a really interesting opportunity to prune. So after all these delicious fruit have been harvested and used, which I'll show you how to do in a second, you really wanna come through and give this a shape. Like I said, 30 feet tall, if you let them get out of control, they really respond to a pruning for shape. So early on when I started living here, I gave this one a pretty serious prune on our Epic Homesteading channel, which kind of chronicles my journey through living in this particular space, more of like a vlog style fun channel that I encourage you to check out. But what I did is I hopped on a ladder, I grabbed the pruning saw, all sorts of different tools and really cut it all down. I cut out any crossing branches in the middle. I shaped it, I topped it. I actually removed a significant amount of branches, so much so that I actually filled an entire compost pile full of just loquat, which composted extremely quickly. I think it's maybe the high nitrogen content in here just really heated up, but that's your best opportunity after all the fruit have set. So somewhere in that late spring, early summer-ish time is a good time to do it, but I can't stare at these anymore without showing you how to use and enjoy them. And they're actually quite versatile and highly worth it. So let's check out a few methods. What's so cool about the loquat fruit is that it is high, high, high in pectin. So 
pectin being the sort of thickening agent when you make a jam or a jelly, makes it a really good candidate for a loquat jam or a loquat jelly. In fact, I've used it as a loquat crumble before. Of course, you can eat it fresh. I've dehydrated these. I've actually blended them and then thrown them on a dehydrator sheet and made loquat fruit leather. But I want to also call your attention to the leaves. This is a very interesting plant, especially when you look into traditional Chinese medicine. Now, I'm no expert there at all, but you can make a pretty simple loquat tea. What you'll notice when a loquat leaf forms, it sort of has this sort of fuzz on the top and you can even rub that off, right? That sort of flies away. And you also have this fuzz on the bottom. I'm actually not looking for a leaf like this. I'm looking for one a little bit older, but not super mature. So if you take a look at, let's say this one right here, this one has a glossy top, but if I flip it over, there still is that kind of fuzzy bottom. And I wanna grab two leaves like this, and then we'll take them into the back prep station and I'll show you exactly how to prepare them. Also grab a couple more fruit too. With fruit, you wanna look for the big size, you want a little bit of give on it, and honestly, there's always so many fruits that you can just give it a quick taste test. If it's, if it's a little bit too tough and it's extremely tart, it's not ready. If it's lightly tart, but there's sort of a juicy sweetness that comes through, it's good to go, and you can also tell by how easily those seeds wanna fall out that it's nice and ripe. Got my loquats and I'm gonna show you how I like to use them. Those really are a lot of different ways. You can be as simple or complex as you want. Of course, if you're just gonna eat them fresh, which we love to do here, I like to rub this sort of fuzz off just on my hands. If you really were paranoid, you could rinse it, but at that point, come in, give it a bite. You'll know it's good when that juice starts to sort of squeeze out. And there you go, the skin's completely edible. Whether you're making a jam, a jelly, a loquat crumble is something that we did last year. It's a little labor intensive, maybe you're even dehydrating them, but it's, it's worth it. So what I like to do is I take a knife, I come through and I split it in half. And then what I'll do is really reveals the seeds quite simply. The seeds go in water to me because if I'm gonna save them, I wanna keep them moist, but I also want to remove some of that residue off of them. And like I said, you can have some really honking loquats with like five or six seeds in there. Now what I like to do is I actually trim off this little sort of flowering end because it's got a little bit of debris in there I kinda don't want. And that also allows you to grab the interior sort of casing of that seed and remove that, which is a little bit more tough. Now this is not mandatory, but now you have a really clean loquat that is ready to process. So it's so fruitful of a tree that we might even have a loquat day here at the homestead with you know friends and family coming over to help process. But this is the fruit and I'll show you now how to make the tea. I got my tea, let's see how it tastes. Sweetened with loquats themselves. Oh, that's really nice. You, the sweetness sort of drops out. You get a sort of medicinal, herbal, tangy flavor. Really nice. First time I've ever made it. Guys, if you want to grow loquat, I can't recommend it more. If you want to win the epic loquat, the son of epic loquat, you just need to be one of the first 100 people to comment on this video. We'll reach out to you. Way to say thank you for watching our content. Of course, you can always support us by grabbing some garden gear at shop.epicgardening.com or at our seed company, Botanical Interests. I'm going to chill by the pond, enjoy my loquat tea. Good luck in the garden and keep on growing.